Hello, Namaskar to all. It's really a great pleasure to see you all again. And as you all of know that uh, we have started this e-session for our institutes to take part and also do uh, and students and faculties and institute staffs they can attend, they can watch. Also, they will get benefit out of these e-sessions and also by submitting the e-assessment forms participants will eligible to get certificate e-certificate and we will issue letter once this uh, session will over especially by the end of june and uh, today's session uh, on marketing research marketing research is a very very important tool also uh, topic of uh, requirement to know for all potential innovators, entrepreneurs, also the mentors. Because without marketing and marketing research tool, uh, it is very difficult to validate your idea also at the innovation or also startup. So how to use this marketing tool at different stages, starting from the problem identification to the idea development, uh, pro prototype and innovation development and uh, startup stage. Uh, today, uh, we have one very good expert from Invest India. He is Dr. Preet Singh. He is working as a AVP at Invest India. And he is, he is looking after the responsibility of business reconstruction, and uh, especially during the post-COVID period. And from education side, uh, he is a graduate from uh, IIM Ahmedabad. He did his PhD from IIM Ahmedabad. Also, he has, a couple, a couple, he has established a couple of startups, and uh, he is a good expert. He is a good expert in uh, marketing and marketing research tools. So, I will request uh, Dr. Preet Singh to uh, focus on uh, marketing research, and also I will request because marketing research is so vast subject. So. Uh, he is going to deliver this session in two, two, in two uh, sessions. So in the first session, in today's session, he will cover the foundation level. And after one week gap, he will again come at, with the advanced level session on marketing research. And he will try to make familiar with different tools and how to use that marketing research tools uh, for your idea, innovation, and startup. So with this, I will request Dr. Preet Singh to take the session and uh, now floor is yours. Thank you, Deepan. Hello, everyone. Um, as Deepan mentioned, I've, uh, I've been doing this for a while now. Uh, so while my area of expertise during my PhD was not marketing, uh, I realized that if anybody would ever want to do something with a startup, you need to know your market study. You need to know your uh, your market size, you need to know a lot of things related to the opportunity size. Uh, how it becomes important is I, I of course started up and failed many times. In fact, uh, usually in my introduction, I start by saying that I have failed so many times that I am a mistake holder in the ecosystem. So one of the things that we realize that is important for every startup is that each team member has to be acutely aware of the entire market value of who is the customer, who is the consumer, what is the price point, what is competition, uh, what is it that you are trying to solve, how are things going. Uh, and you know, it's, it's nice that we've decided to keep this into two different sessions. The second session will focus more on maybe one advanced case study. Uh, I, would, uh, I would, after the end of the session, I would request you to of course do some exercises at your end. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you would want to share those. But you should do it for your understanding to know if you have understood those well. Uh, how the session progresses is I'll just take you through some basics of, you know, what all uh, a market research study or a market study or, you know, marketing study, what all, what all these things entail. It will be a more broader overview. Uh, and, you know, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to uh, reach out. Right. So I'll just share my screen uh, with the presentation. Um, just let me know in case the screen is visible. The screen is visible, right? Great. Uh, so yeah. So in terms of an overview, I think uh, one of the more important things in any startup's journey is market size. Uh, 
you know there's this uh, really nice infographic that you see a lot of times that says why startups fail and you will see that 60% of them fail uh, because they make something that is not required right that nobody needs if nobody needs your product your product will definitely be failing there is there is there is no two ways about it right uh, if i set up an online e-commerce platform that is charging people more money to buy goods from there then nobody needs that right and then it will fail which is why amazon flipkart all of these have to indulge in discounts on the other hand last mile delivery is something everybody needs so amazon will give you a 50% off on a big air conditioner that you buy it's a 40000 air conditioner you get it for 15 20 25000 $25, but they will still charge the 200 rupee delivery fee right so because you can only charge for what people want so it is important for you to understand what people want because that is what your startup should be doing if you create something that you think everybody should have then you are in the role of government you are not in the role of a startup a startup makes what people want that is where your market size comes through another important aspect here is market penetration uh, we'll see we'll see how this is this is different from market size and how this can actually change the entire game in a in a major way uh, and finally segmenting targeting positioning uh, stp you know any management student will tell you what stp is and how stp goes about uh, so we'll take care of these three things uh in case there are other topics you want me to cover just drop a message drop me a line and we'll take those over so what is market size so the market size is the total number of people who could buy the product who could buy the product right um so when i say who could buy the product what i mean is people who have the capability and interest right there's also an interesting footnote there and that is in some cases the customer and consumer are different right now you might be thinking what is the difference between this customer is the person who purchases your product a customer is the person who purchases your product the consumer is the person who consumes your product getting it now you know it's it's not very easy this difference but think about this uh cement right if any one of us have ever gotten a house constructed uh you know we get cement right who pays for this cement of course you pay right because you're getting the house made so you decide that you know do you want gangur cement do you want ambuja cement do you want birla cement whichever cement you want right but who consumes it who buys it who decides to buy it i'll take a simpler example uh you know serilac who consumes serilac babies consume serilac right but who buys serilac right their parents of course because babies are too young to have a credit card right when the baby's mother or father when this person goes to the store they are your customer you need to be attracting them right so there is a difference in customer and consumer so if we are ever looking at the market size of serilac or let's say uh, milk powder right in that case we need to pay attention to both these separately that how many kids can and would want to consume this and how many parents can actually pay for this right so just keep this distinction in mind it is it is one of the more important things uh the second thing here yeah the second thing here is how do you estimate it you know so let's just keep this simple let's not let's not delve into complications here let's keep it simple uh the total market size for any b2c product b2c means business to consumer b2b means business to business b2g means business to government right b2c is the product that a business sells to people and a b2b is a product that a business sells to another business so it is an intermediary right and b2g is what you sell to the government right so every b2c product will say the entire world is my audience you know let's say you create a new phone you will say that everybody in the world can will anyway need a phone so uh, a phone is uh, my my market is 7 billion people in the world right 
so that is a good start point that is not the end point of course right from that you need to segment it you need to say that you know my phone costs uh, let's say 30000 rupees so the segment that i could target is everybody who has an a disposable income of more than 30000 rupees right then you also have to seek you know what percentage of their annual income is this person going to spend on your phone let's say if a if a rickshaw puller earns about 1 lakh rupees in a year i do not think this person is going to buy your phone for 30000 right so your segment then becomes maybe somebody who earns about uh, 4 lakh a year this person can become my target segment right or similarly you can also say that you know my phone will have let's say the best graphics right so anybody who's interested in playing video games right on their phone would be my target segment right the paying ability that we decided you know the for example if you're talking about people who are into graphics then we also need to see who are the people who can pay for those graphics which means that from uh, whatever 3 billion gamers in the world your target segment now will become about 1 billion because about 60 percent of those people might not be able to pay this sort of a premium product right and then of course reach uh, if you start something in noida or let's say guntur or odisha you know are you going to reach uh, waterloo are you going to reach ghana are you going to reach kenya no so you will be restricted by that geography also so your essential size that you can actually address becomes much much smaller right uh, so these are things that all can vary for example if you are giving people a loan then your paying ability lever changes if you are expanding uh, your market geographically your reach changes if you are willing to launch multiple products your segments change right so you need to see how all of these components fit i'm assuming a number of you would be engineers so there is this concept called drake's equation um, if you want uh, we could cover that maybe in the next session but that is an interesting approach to market sizing of course uh, the main main question again comes in can you address the entire group right uh, we'll take a small example uh, before we go to the example these are things that you should carry in your head uh, you know how do you keep your estimates real for any startup when they say you know what is our total market size what is our target market what is the segment these are some of the questions that they have in their head let's say you launch a new um, taxi taxi startup you know cab startup uh, taxi hailing jo, uh, online taxi hailing like ola or uber right so you see how many people can pay how many people are interested uh, how many people need your product uh, how many people are not loyal to a competitor let's say you know somebody has a great deal with ola somebody has a corporate deal with uber do they actually want to switch to uh, you know the new company that you are launching uh, how many people would want to afford this entire thing uh, as i said you know the rickshaw puller can pay for it but the rickshaw puller cannot afford it how many people can legally access it you know it's totally possible that uh, a state in india has banned taxi sharing by a new person unless you meet a certain threshold right so that also reduces your market size how many people can access it geographically you know if you are serving let's say only urban areas then all the rural areas are gone so with these sort of questions in mind why don't you think what is the size of mutual fund market in india right just take a moment take a moment think of mutual funds you know we get that ad ki a person with a kid ki ye bada hoga destination wedding i'll start investing in mutual funds right how many people do you think buy mutual funds the number of people who buy mutual funds is practically the market size of mutual funds that is currently there right this of course is a market penetration angle so just just think take a moment you know you can say ki okay what is the population in india okay how many people want to invest money uh, by the way you can start investing in mutual fund with as little as 500 rupees right so you need to think of how many people in india have 500 rupees to invest right and mutual funds are fairly liquid so you get the money back in two days right worst case scenario two days right so which means it is very similar to a bank account it is only 500 rupees right now india has a population of let's say 1.3 crores right 
130 crores, right? 1.3 billion. Now tell me how many people out of these 130 crores, 1.3 billion, would be investing in mutual funds? You know? Take a moment. Whenever you're ready, we'll move forward. You could share your answers also on the screen. Okay, so let's let's look at it now, right? Um, I told you the questions that we saw last time. So this is one way in which uh, this is a stat that I've taken from Outlook India, and uh, you know, let's see how they've done it. Uh, this is something that I think you should all carry at the back of your mind. No one can address the entire market. What is the biggest company you know of? HUL, PNG, you know, Aerial Surf Excel, Tide, biggest companies in the world, right? Apple, Nokia, Flipkart, Facebook, WhatsApp, biggest companies. These companies do not have a hundred percent market penetration. Nobody does it, right? Now let's see how real your estimate of mutual fund uh, industry size in India is based on penetration. So the Indian population is 130 crores. There are 123 crore Aadhaar card holders. Adults are 80 crores. 75 crore bank accounts in India. 40 crore PAN card holders in India. Uh, people who have insurance are about 35 crores. Registered taxpayers are 8.5 crores. 130 crore people, 8.5 crore people pay tax. Mutual fund investors are fewer than those. Only 2 crore people invest in a mutual fund. Now there's an interesting point here that you might want to notice. Look at the fourth layer from the bottom, PAN card holders. Why is this important? Because in order to invest in a mutual fund, you need to get through your KYC, right? Now, this is one of the legal filters. The regulations prevent this thing, right? So the filter is coming down. You need to be eligible to take this product. So if you start a mutual fund tomorrow, the number of people that you can target, that you can assume you want to target is this. And it is hurdled by the PAN card. Right? Important thing. You cannot go and deposit cash for a mutual fund. You cannot do that. Right? So you need a bank account also. Right? You need to be paying tax. If you are a PAN card holder, in a lot of cases you pay tax. In a lot of cases you have a PAN card more as an identity proof. Because a PAN card can be made even for a baby. Right? Anybody can get a PAN card. Right? You need to be an adult PAN card holder to actually be investing. Right? So this is how the market comes down, 130 crores, 2 crore people. What, what is 2 crore? I'm guessing 2 crore is about 1.3%, less than 2% easily. 2% would be 2.6 crores, less than 2% is the market size, right? So this is how your entire population comes down when you are doing a market sizing for your product, right? And this is also how your estimates will be real. Otherwise, if you start a startup today, and you say, you know, my market size is 130 crores. Your startup valuation will start moving into maybe 10 digits and 11 digits, right? Uh, in USD. <laughs> so that'll, that'll be, that'll be very off and nobody will be taking you seriously. So make sure you do a similar exercise. I am going to share the questions again with you. You know, think of these questions. Whenever you're doing that study, think of these questions and make sure you create a filter like this, right? Okay, let's move forward. Uh, now, this is the more interesting bit of uh, segmenting, targeting, positioning. Segmenting is very simple. Uh, Dr. Pitsing. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Pitsing, sorry for interruption. Just I want to put uh, my word here. Yeah. And actually, generally, this is, we never try at the beginning level. And I saw many by many uh, innovator and also at the idea level or the startup level they just give a just a one big picture big figure of 1000 sorry 100 crore kind of things but they never downsize that from a bigger population to the smaller one with by putting all these legal uh, uh, layers and Class. nobody is trying actually that's why sometimes the value we propose sometimes it is misleading or also others will uh, they will hard to believe on the data when we present to somebody and i think you have given a very very good uh, and uh, good good case uh, to correlate their product with this example and then 
putting lots of work and doing some background uh, research uh, to how to define the actual market uh, market size please please go ahead thank you actually you are uh, wonderfully putting all these examples please please go ahead my pleasure deepan i think i think it is very important that uh, that we keep things real you know uh, so by the way uh, everybody knew that the biggest the the uh, highest valued private company in the world was uber before the uh, before the ipo came out right uber's uber was valued at 60 billion dollars 60 billion dollars is a lot of money it's a lot of money right uh, what you need to understand is that uh, uber started with just a small segment of silicon valley and new york right itna chhota market size itna chhota itna sa right they did not say ki the entire world is our market size so let's say the uh, the average lifetime value of a customer is 5 dollars right and you get the entire population as your customer right so that is 35 billion dollars in pure play uh, revenue right so that is that is very off that would put everything off you cannot be taking the entire world as that you need to filter it down it is very important and that is that is what shows that you have actually studied your product you know the best mentors the best teachers the best professors the best startups investors definitely they will look at you only when they realize you have understood this it is fine if you earn 1000 rupees in your first two years it is just okay as long as you are able to sell as long as what you project is around that amount you need to keep it real you know mtv ad keep it real keep it raw always keep it real if you start by being somebody who inflates figures then everybody is going to label you as a gas maker ki are this is just fluff yaar this person is not serious they are not doing anything nobody takes you seriously right uh, so in case we get a number of suggestions on the uh, on the topics uh, i think uh, we can take more of these uh, in the next session right if you want me to cover those right uh, so yeah so segmenting so segmenting or segmentation uh, what it means is imagine there is this population right there is an entire population how do you cut it how do you cut it think of it as a cake and how do you slice the cake right so how do we usually slice the cake when a when a kid celebrates their birthday they cut off one side of the cake it is not like a perfect uh, from the center it is just from the side right now in hotels when they have to distribute cakes sometimes they use a a, a more uh, rectangular shape right to give it to a kid maybe you need a circular shape similarly when you have to decide out of this 130 crore who all are the different people right it is like using a lens you can say ki okay india has a population of 130 crores uh, you know 60 crores would definitely be women the rest would be men that is segregating on gender right you could say that okay there are 42 crore pan card holders the rest are non pan card holders right you could say 2 crore people invest in mutual funds the rest do not invest right so this is basically choosing a knife how to divide the population you can divide the population in various ways just for example in your classes you know the professor the teacher could divide you based on uh, based on you know your name ki people from a to m sit here people from n to z sit there they could divide based on the marks you got in a particular subject ki all those people who got x marks in engineering drawing sit here all those who did not sit there that is how you are segmenting the class right now tomorrow if i am supposed to be selling these really accurate architectural pencils how will i divide the entire population in the first go i will say people who have to draw and people who don't have to draw then i will further divide people who have to draw into people who value precision people who don't value precision so a lot of your younger siblings and cousins would have to draw things right in school draw cartoon draw ball they don't need high precision but your draftsman foreman 
your architects your civil engineers might need a lot of precision in that pencil right so this is how you keep cutting the population so there are some famous methods of course there are some less famous methods i'll just give you a broad overview of those so one is this geographic psychographic behavioral and uh, i'm sorry for the typo there a uh, demographic uh, 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 change demographic uh, segmentation right basically what these four do it demographic basically means your uh, age your height your weight your preferences geographic is where you are located again within geographic you can say that you know i want to do continent wise i want to do country wise i want to do english speaking countries i want to do countries with a high rural population i want to do countries where the public transport system is very developed right let's say for something like an uber that would have been one of the things that they thought of ki you know i want a decentralized population where the public transport is probably not last mile or is overloaded if you look at it that is their best market right uh psychographic behavioral you know attitude uh, i want to look at people who want to try new things who want to be at the cutting edge for example if a if a new iphone comes up then i am looking for people to target who will stand in line for one whole day to get that phone those are the people who want to be on the cutting edge right uh if i am looking for something very reliable then you know i am probably looking i would probably for example i uh, eyeball eyeball was a comp- uh, uh, company brand uh, intex brand that said that you know i am coming out with this phone that only has these nine buttons a zero key a call key and a disconnect key this will be for old age people because they wanted something very reliable so their segmentation was like that right similarly you can also segment based on the value chain so for example if you are selling let's say uh, a service for telling people the best routes right for example if i have to go from here to let's say uh, jharsuguda right direct flight to nahi hai aur mere ghar se to flight chalti nahi hai so i will probably need a cab or a metro from here to the airport from airport to bhubaneswar from bhubaneswar maybe a train right so multiple modes of transport are involved now will this be to the customer directly will i make an app that i will spread to the world or will i give this api to yatra and make my trip right or will i give this to railways you know tomorrow when somebody is booking a ticket with irctc they can see ki okay this flight also fits right so you need to know where in the value chain you are going to be and this is your segmentation right then of course there is a very famous segmentation process called sec abc uh, so sec abc stands for socio economic classification it is very simple uh, it is based on you know uh, whether you have a kachcha ghar pakka ghar what sort of income you have and your level of education right just these three basic things what makes this a very very preferred method is that this data is available in census which means down till the pin code level you know what sec classification is there right now people who have pakka houses have a certain specific uh, uh buying habit right and people who are in kachcha houses who might not also be educated have a different set of buying habits if you can segment your market based on this then you can get very very accurate estimates of your market size right uh this of course was done by somebody from ima long year years ago uh and you know these are just three examples there are hundreds of methods of segmentation hundreds of methods right and you need to decide for your startup what is the best way to segregate the population what is the best way to segment the population right for example there is a startup called psafe right psafe has a very simple proposition that because women have more contact when they have to travel so they have divided the population into males females as simple as that right from females then of course paying ability and that filter starts coming in but that is very simple for your startup maybe you want people who have an apple watch right maybe you want people who are already let's say working on uh, some startups right so these things become important it is totally up to you which method there is now targeting important question 
how do you target once you have the entire segment you target targeting is what slice of the cake is important right segmentation you have three different ways in which you slice the cake targeting is for you to understand that which of these three cakes ke slices is relevant to me right so for example i'll take the example of psef again so psef could have targeted this thing by gender they could have also targeted by people who were hygiene conscious or not hygiene conscious right for example a lot of times males would also have more contact when we would travel right uh differently abled people have a lot of contact elderly people have a lot of contact right uh, in a lot of cases babies have a lot of contact right uh, i don't know if you've noticed whenever you go to an airport there is a special place for babies to change diapers where parents can change babies diapers right so these would have been the three different segmentations that the psaf team would have done and then they would have decided ki yaar we think this is not our target this seems to be good but let us focus on this right so targeting is for you to astutely determine which of these is better so let's say you come up with a premium psaf product then this might not be the best targeting for you maybe the best targeting for you in that case would be the baby diaper change market right because people are a lot more willing to spend money on baby hygiene than on their own hygiene right so you need to see which sort of targeting which sort of target fits you and your product right um i as i also determined b2b b2c b2g uh i would also have one very strong recommendation please do not create products that you think are b2g please do not create a product that you know the government should buy this the government should sell this to everybody government should pay me money government should enforce everything that is not how the government works government procurement is with taxpayers money we just saw na 8.5 crore taxpayers the money that these 8.5 crore taxpayers pay is used to procure things government processes are strong innovative procurement is not government strong fort corporates can do that better right and corporates will also be faster in turn around government has to follow a process government is audited everything the government does in the public domain so whenever you create a product excuse me whenever you create a product please make sure because government is the easy way out everybody thinks ki you know i have this sanitary pad dispensing machine the government should buy it from me and the government should give it to everybody that is not the best way you know maybe your target segment is colleges that is where you have a lot of women who are in that phase where they cannot go out to markets and where they are like a captive audience right maybe it is offices corporates or maybe you can just start giving it to people to keep it at their homes the government is a very easy target but it is not the easiest target to convert right so please keep this in mind this is a very important aspect of targeting yes. okay now uh, something that i really like Preeti, if you will allow me for yeah, one please, minute, please. Uh, yes, because because uh, so let let me uh, what I understood in the last twenty thirty minutes is yeah. that you said that market is the most important factor that you we should consider at the beginning of beginning of the at the idea level. Also, yeah. what you what I understood that market and understanding market and doing the market research and identifying the right target. or also the segmenting the target has the two benefits first benefit is that you should know that where you are heading of your product and how you are going to take to the customer also in that process also you are going to discover so many other innovations which yes. you can do further innovations right so it has okay. both benefits so it will make it will take your it will ensure that your product will reach to the right market right customer and also you will through that process you will identify so many other problems and for that which will again you will do lots of innovations so it's kind of a it uh, two side benefit also iterative process that uh, this marketing research is going to give the benefits so uh, not only at the startup level also they can apply at the idea level also at the, also at the exactly. innovation level also yes yes very important deepan very right when you study your customer that is when you realize what you should be doing 
that is what will tell everybody you meet from good employees to good coders to your incubators to your mentors to your professors that this person has delve deep this person has done their hard work totally agree very important point okay pl please go ahead yeah okay okay so now something that i really like uh i know a lot of you would have had a mac or you know you have a friend who has a mac or your college laboratory has a mac right when you touch a mac right i know you all have windows laptops i also have a windows laptop right when you touch an apple mac not the iphones the mac right what do you feel take a moment and answer that we all have a very similar set of feelings by the way but okay right similarly just answer me what do you feel when you hear about pvr director's cut you know it's it's a way you have to watch a movie pvr director's cut you know when you feel when you hear about this similarly if you or your cousins have been to japan when you board a train in japan or when you hear about a train in japan or a japanese uh, metro or bus you know what is it that it invokes in you right i don't know how many of you have an old nokia phone your elder siblings or your parents would have an old nokia phone the 1108 right what is the feeling that it evokes right take a moment take a moment and i will talk about these in a moment right okay apple design you know you can talk to anybody across the world they might not like the interface ki are isme to sab kuch ulta hai cross yahan pe hai lal button wahan hai ye galat ho raha hai but everybody would tell you you touch an apple you feel design you feel finish you feel oh this is wonderful oh this is amazing right apple has always positioned itself in design and creativity just by the way everybody in the film industry every graphics video audio editing singing uh, every acting every professional uses a mac everybody who has to work with multimedia uses a mac right they have put themselves in the center of design and creativity every good design startup will be using a mac right that is their positioning in your head when you think of mac you are thinking design just by the way i am of course a big fan of apple apple is the worst product you can have as a student the worst product because your laptop space is limited to 80 gb a lot of phones have more storage than your apple max right and as a student you know you don't know what you are supposed to be doing so you keep getting more and more data from people you download files you download lectures and everything right but apple is clear i will sacrifice everything else and apple products are pretty expensive by the way apple is very clear design i will be the best in design nobody will beat me there right similarly pvr directors cut you know this is this has feeling of exclusivity of comfort they have a high price point of course they are very clear we will have only 10 15 20 seats in a 200 seater hall and you know, of course like five halls but only 20 seats and it will be very exclusive it will be very comfortable right uh japanese trains i don't know how many of you said it but you know this is what it evokes globally punctuality the total time duration that all japanese trains were late by in one whole year right was less than 7 minutes was less than 7 minutes so there are let's say 10 buses there are of course many more i'm just giving you an example 10 buses that do two routes across 10 stops right so there are 20 routes right throughout the year right so that's like 7300 routes the total amount of time that they all were collectively late for was less than 7 minutes you know japan and switzerland pride themselves on punctuality right they might not have the best air conditioning they might not have fingerprinting access control they might not have cctv but it is punctuality and they are known the world over for that so your positioning should be such that people world over say this is this it is this product i will take this product right you know you can ask some of your elder siblings but an old nokia phone was the most reliable thing in the world you know especially now with all these new phones you could throw a nokia phone on the wall you could 
misplace the charger for a month and you would still have that phone working just fine right your product whatever your product is needs to have a position and please don't tell me your position is the service that you deliver no it is it is not that right so the service that you deliver for example an apple they do not deliver a design service they are delivering a computing service but their positioning is design right pvr director's cut is delivering a movie they are not delivering exclusivity or comfort their positioning is this so positioning is different from the service that you deliver right uh so it is it is of course what I, as i said the feeling that the brand tries to evoke uh this is an open source diagram on how to understand take a moment uh, grasp this if there are questions let me know so similar to how we said you know there will be filter questions this is how those filter questions are where tam is total market and sam is serviceable market right uh this this includes like this accounts for the constraints of legal and your sales and geography right and out of that you segment and you decide this is my target market right who are the people i will be targeting to push to buy my product or service right so let's let's take an example now uh this is this is more of like a case study method it's a small overview uh we'll end after this so just pay attention here and keep thinking alongside okay so let us help a startup that is putting uh, vehicle inspections on blockchain right uh, so what this startup does is uh, for a vehicle insurance there is an inspection that happens you know they click pictures they take your uh, uh, engine number chassis number and everything uh, before an insurance happens so that later if there is a claim then they can verify with this image ki oh, okay the headlight was broken earlier also right insurance inspection very simple the startup's value addition is they are putting it on blockchain right uh, it is done for two wheelers and four wheelers it is used at the time of the claim right now with me here right now can you do a market research market study market sizing for this startup you know take a moment pause the video if you want and do this study and we'll take care of some results and what my thoughts are on this it is possible that our thoughts don't agree you could be right i could be wrong i could be right you could have some scope to learn right but let us all do this you understood the thing uh, whenever you need to get an insurance if there is a lapse in insurance whenever you need to get a new insurance they come the inspector vehicle uh, you tell the insurance company they send somebody somebody comes in does this sends it back you get an insurance right ye hai take a moment and do the market study for this okay let's move on okay so what would be the segment what would be the segment okay we can divide as per value chain that is what i think you can of course have a different one so as per value chain insurance ka value chain kya rehta insurance ka value chain is insurance company inspection agency and the insured insured is this ki gaadi hai the person who owns the vehicle right now as per this what do you think would the target be who is your target market if you are putting these inspection reports on the blockchain right the party who cares about it out of these three who cares about the inspection report the insurance company why because they have to pay the people who pay for your service are the people who will have to pay if they do not take your service as simple as that they could be paying if they don't take your service they could be paying a cost or they could be paying somebody else so in this case the insurance company cares that you know i should have the accurate inspection report so they should be a good target for you positioning right now think carefully take a moment if you have to but what would be the positioning for this startup what would be a good positioning for the startup you are now targeting insurance companies and you are putting things on blockchain right think of this what is the most valuable thing right now 
reliability some of you have said accuracy which is just fine you know the insurance company cares that this has to be an accurate report accuracy or reliability or uh, dependability or you know to be able to count on it yes they're all they're all correct in my view right what is the market size what is the market size for this startup so one thing you should know is legally it is mandatory for all vehicles to have a have an insurance right you know lapse wala nahi hona chahiye right so the market size will be people who have a break in insurance right which means you start with all two wheelers and four wheelers right and from that you filter to people who have a break in insurance like you know premium nahi pay kiya and their insurance lapse right let's say this number is 6 7 8% right let's say there are 100 cars so 8 cars is your market size here right an important thing when you think of this market size a very important thing the new law has come out that makes us makes it mandatory to have motor vehicle insurance right this means that you will get a chalan or an imprisonment if you do not have insurance which means the break that used to come the break that came when you move from having an insurance to renewing the insurance this break will be a chalan right what does this mean think about it this means that fewer and fewer people will have a break in insurance this is a narrowing market size are you getting it understand this again this is a narrowing market size whenever you do such a thing this company is not going to sustain in the long run you will not be able to create value for 10 years your market size will be continuously shrinking right you have to keep this in mind when you think of an idea this is a perfect plan this is a great startup wonderful doing blockchain but it is a shrinking market size especially if the government does not want this right this these are things you need to keep in mind it comes later it comes with practice honestly it comes with mistakes right but you need to keep these things in mind right just before we close uh some ideas on where you get all this data you know united nations and related websites unctad who amazing repository of data human development index great data great data every country in the world every state in the world they will have data of how educated people are how literate people are how much people are happy how much people earn what people eat what people drink where people go when people sleep what time people get up for india of course census is a great place rti data rti a lot of data is published in the newspapers you can search it or uh, you know you have rajya sabha lok sabha questions by the way rajya sabha lok sabha questions you can hold them accountable in court if the government has given this data point they are answerable they will stand by that data point you know you have some great journals and magazines uh, you know fortune forbes and economist economist has a lot of open data repository the economist the magazine based in uk use those research papers are great in fact research papers also give like a geeky feel so you have a startup where you are looking for investment having a research bag number is great mosby ministry of statistics and project implementation great resource for a lot of data rbi releases a lot of reports company annual reports have a lot of data industry reports like you know cm has auto industry reports uh amfi a mutual fund organ uh, organizations association of mutual fund industry has a lot of those reports that come out all those reports can be used and feel free to use those reports quote them say that you know i have taken this number from here whenever you mention a data point please mention data source please mention data source it lends credibility otherwise i can say today population of the world is 300 crores unless i say that you know this research paper from this from nasa or wherever has come nobody is going to accept my word for it right ah uh, that was it from my side uh, just one more thing till next time i want you all to do for any idea you have for any idea do a market size market target study you can do it you know on on a normal uh, paper pencil uh, just do it in your head put it down just understand the assumptions you make 
it will be great if you do this in pairs and you know if somebody else can also do it for the same product it just helps you build perspective how people are thinking how you should also think uh the second is figure out the positioning of your five fav- favorite products and then pause a bit right uh so think of any five products you know it could be a glass it could be a laptop a phone uh you know your favorite t-shirt your air conditioner your cupboard your jeans just think of the positioning right and make sure you take some time during this exercise make sure you take some time so that you realize at a higher level what it is right it is easy to say the positioning of my jeans is it provides denim it provides good color right is that the positioning is that why you bought a levi's jeans is there something that the brand evokes so do that right um i have some content available on amazon also we could share it for free if you want i am available on twitter any questions you have any suggestions you have anything you want us to cover you can drop a comment here you can reach me out on twitter you can let deepan know more than happy to be with you in whatever you want that's it deepan thank you thank you dr preet uh actually uh, if you will ask me that how that session is i will say it is wonderful and you have explained very nicely with example uh, by highlighting the key features of market and most importantly you have ex- explained that uh, what is the market and what are the different type of market uh, uh, every individuals especially those are aspiring to become an entrepreneur or, the, or those are innovator they, those want to take their products or innovations forward or also those are practicing uh, venture or they have the startup so because market they can't stay away from market market yeah. is the first thing they should think about before they start about their innovation and market and the product and the innovation stages should go simultaneously and it should be validated each and every stages then only the sustainability the scalability or and other started. options will come into the yes. picture without without uh, making uh, by de associating the market and uh, your product or innovation or startup it will never never feasible never, yeah. and most yeah. important thing that what you have mentioned is that even though you understand market but you have to understand your market very very systematically that's why this market and research one one word is market mm-hmm. another is the market and research both are combined that's why we call we call it is marketing research and because understanding the market in a very systematic way in a very methodological way by using the scientific uh, way of uh, defining the market then that is that is the actually one of the characteristic of an entrepreneur so so that to mitigate the risk to manage the risk and marketing research is one of the tool which will help these entrepreneurs to mitigate the risk and to manage the risk by reducing the uncertainties in the process of their journey to become an entrepreneur right. or to become an innovator also you have very good uh, hi- uh, explained also highlighted that uh, what are the different segmentation methods uh, how to how to segment the whole market what is the target what is the positioning of your product so this i i understand this is a kind of kind of a foundation level session so you have restricted to this level and in next session uh, i hope you are going to cover the next level what are the tools and how these tools are going to help to uh, inter- to collect the data and also interpret the data and also how how that will be used for the decision making uh, i hope these are the objectives of your next session and the so next session we'll uh, be taking I a, the yeah we'll be taking a case in yeah, the next session we'll be taking a case and of course some feedback that we receive or more queries we'll take a live case and see how that can be solved yeah so uh, i will request all students and faculties and mentors and also the other uh, other members those are watching this session because this session is really a very going to very very benefit to all of you if you will uh, listen and watch very carefully also we have to go through uh, the e e assessment form where we, will, we are going to ask certain questions to understand your uh, uh, level of uh, understanding on marketing research and uh, further i will request dr preet to share your contact number or email or something so that they will write to you also so uh, if you have that you can uh, you can you can tell them so at the rate dr preet deep twitter is where i usually take a lot of startup queries okay so you, you generally you are dealing through 
future yeah yeah okay good so then then stay tuned then stay tuned for the next session uh, that we are going to do in the next week and uh, for the time being uh, you just uh, keep on watching us because the, yeah, we are we have planned sessions on every day so tomorrow we have another session so um, please be ready and we want you all should watch us and also watch our session and also participate in all kind of uh, e assessment forms and you will get benefit out of it that's the only objective uh, uh, we have thank you thank you all for joining and watching us namaskar